everyone. These are the student tutorial instructions for PBS 4.2.2, the Under the Sea Lab. All right, you guys, here we go. We're gonna get started. So we're gonna start by labeling um, the snap cap tubes here. You'll see I have 10 um, in a row here of the snap cap tubes. You're gonna use the Sharpie that's in your student kit um, to label both the top of the tube and the side. And we're gonna label it one, two, three, four, five, and then repeat one, two, three, four, five. Alright you guys, so in the next step what we're going to be doing is um, we'll be using forceps to transfer a piece of sponge into the corresponding sponge tube. So I have everything labeled and color coded. It's important that we don't um, contaminate the experiment. So you'll open up the petri dish, you'll pick up a piece of sponge, and try your best not to squeeze the sponge because the liquid inside is what we're gonna be needing to test. And so you'll pick up the corresponding tube. I'll go ahead and do one and then you guys can do the rest. And you'll place it um, just in the top of the tube like this. And then um, you'll just leave it like that and then close your Petri dish back up. So I did one, if you guys could do two, three, four, and five. Um, so you'll just do the first five tubes, the others will be empty. We're gonna combine steps um, three and four for this next um, section. And so you're gonna need um, a micropipetter and um, we'll need to set the micropipetter to 50 microliters. Um, so I need you guys to decide which micropipetter would work best for that. So you have two, two options. You have a two to 20 and you have a 20 to 200 microliter option. Which one should you use in order to transfer 50 microliters? Right, so go ahead and set that to 50 microliters. So that would be a 0, 0.50. 0, um, and then get a clean tip. Okay, and then um, I like the way you close the box when you are done, so we wanna keep those sterile. I'm gonna show you how to do sample one, and then each of you will take a turn doing your samples. So you'll take sample one with sponge one, and what you're gonna do is use the tip to push the sponge down into um, the micro centrifuge tube, and you're gonna squeeze it to the bottom, and you're, you're gonna do it one, two, three, four-ish times. Um, then you can also mix the liquid just to make sure all of those bioactive materials are being released into, um, so just draw up and push back out the liquid that's inside the micro centrifuge tube. When you think it's sufficient, um, you're going to make sure that the tip is empty. Go to the first stop with your micropipetter. You'll put it in to the tube and draw up 50 microliters of um, sample from number one. You're gonna then transfer into the empty micro centrifuge to one that we labeled earlier. So you'll completely 
transfer the liquid into number one. We're gonna close that up for now, and then we will get a new tip for each sample. So who's number two? Um, in this next step, you're gonna be adding 10 microliters of screening reagent to each of the five samples. Um, 10 microliters is a very small amount, so when you look at your tube, you're gonna see there's not much in here. Don't let that panic you. Um, we're just transferring small amounts of liquid. So it is important, though, that you micropipette um, accurately, so make sure you're only pushing to the first stop. So you will open the screening reagent tube. Um, make sure that you have tapped down um, so that all the liquids from the side has gone to the bottom. That should help. And then you're going to go to the first stop. You'll place it into the microcentrifuge tube and then pull up. And then that's 10 microliters and we're gonna transfer that. I'll do number one and you guys can do the others. We're gonna transfer it to the first tube. Since we are, um, using the same liquid and not um, touching anything that would make it contaminated, we can use the same tip for all five samples. After you've put um, the screening reagent into the tube, you can tap it um, down on the table a couple of times to ensure that it's mixing with the sponge solution. So I'm done with number one, and then who's number two?
to look at our results at this point um, of the qualitative test, and I'm going to start with sample one. So I've been showing sample one. So um, you'll, if you hold up your sample to a white background, you can see whether there's a color change or not. And for sample one, you can see that there was no color change, so this is a negative result. Sample two. All right. There's no color change, so it's a negative result. For sample three, there's no color change, so this is a negative result. For sample four, you can see the color change, so this is a positive result. All right, no color change, so this is also a negative result. After you've made observations, you're going to move to the step to get prepared for module two of the experiment. And so we're going to be micropipetting 100 microliters of lysis buffer. So I labeled it LB on your test tube um, racks. So here's lysis buffer. And we're going to be um, micropipetting 100 microliters. So which micropipetter would you use for that? Work. Okay. So, and um, this time it's going to be set to 100. So, does somebody want to set that up for me? So, when you have it set to 100 microliters, you're going to get a clean tip. And um, you're going to be transferring 100 microliters of um, lysis buffer to only the positive samples. Now you'll see from our results that you um, saw previously that we only had positive results from um, sponge four. We were supposed to also get positive results for two. So for the purposes of this um, tutorial, we're gonna go ahead and treat both two and four as if they were positive. Okay, so we're gonna be transferring 100 microliters of the lysis buffer to just the positive samples, which are two and four. And um, then we will be uh, incubating them in the hot water bath for five minutes. So I'll need someone to set a timer for five minutes um, when we get started for that. So who is sample two? All right, so 100 into, and we wanna make sure we're um, putting it into the tube that has the sponge in it. We no longer need the tubes that we did the qualitative testing on. We'll be um, micropipetting 100 microliters of lysis buffer into sample four, which was also a positive sample. All right, at this point, um, numbers two and four, um, just um, tap it against the counter a little bit. Um, you can vortex if you have a vortex, but you can also just mix by tapping. And then we're going to use this flotation device. So you can put your samples in the flotation device. Okay, so you're gonna put the um, samples in the flotation device and you're gonna put that in the hot water bath for five minutes. So, yep, go ahead and float it in. And the hot water bath is set to 30, around 37 degrees Celsius. Okay, so go ahead and start the timer for five minutes. Five minutes later. So five minutes have passed. So you're gonna go ahead and retrieve your samples from the hot water bath. And remove them from the flotation devices. If you can't get it out that way, you can always like dump it as well. Okay. And now what you're gonna do is, um, if you could label these two and four with a Sharpie for me, please. Okay, so you'll be micropipetting 100 microliters of your sample into the uh, matching screw cap tube. Since it's 
it's already set to 100, you should be all set and ready to go. Make sure you're using a different micropipette tip for each sample. So if you don't mind labeling this bag with the, your group name um, so that we can find it next period, um, we're gonna refrigerate these samples overnight. And um, the only thing that we need to keep for module two are these um, items. So we need our two positive samples that we incubated and added um, lysis buffer to. And we also need the excess lysis buffer. Okay, go ahead and put these in your sample bag. And then you'll put that bag in the class periods bag so we can find it tomorrow. And this will be refrigerated overnight and we'll pull them back out for module two. Thank you so much for your help, everyone. Mm -hmm.